Morning guys and gals, Froggy here. That's my pool filter cartridge. It's not my favorite job, but I'm gonna shoot a video anyway. Um, and at the very end, I'm actually gonna show you how to take it out, which is the first step at the very beginning, but I didn't video that, but I can show you how to do it in, in the reverse at the end. So what I like to do is take it out to the front. The stuff that I'm watching, washing off is uh, algae and diatomaceous earth, or DE. Diatomaceous earth is, uh, it's inert. Think of it like uh, f flour, flour from wheat or corn or wherever flour comes from, rice. And uh, only it comes from sand. And it's part of the fil filtering system. Sorry, holy cow, I got way off of uh, listening to myself talk. I got way off of the uh, subject matter. Anyway, um, I, I, use, I like to use a high pressure hose. I have some water at my house that is street pressure, which is like maybe 100 PSI. And your house pressure, as you probably know, is like 60, 65 PSI. So I like to use the high pressure and I've got a nozzle on the end of that. And um, I'm not going to bore you with watching me wash it off, but you've got to wash it off outside, inside, turn it upside down and wash it again. Outside, inside, get as much of that old DE off as you can. Okay? Okay, that's pretty clean. You're going to get wet, so make sure you wear a bathing suit or some... Uh, something you don't care about getting wet and also i suggest doing it on a, a sunny day or a warm day usually you don't need to do this in the winter anyway because your pool's not getting used that much okay uh, now we've got to start taking this apart uh, because i've actually got some that are broken and the de is leaking through back into the pool let me see if i can show you Here's some frame here that's broken on the bottom. Okay, most of them are broken on the bottom. Broken in the middle, I think. It's not really supposed to be two. Oh, maybe it is two pieces, I'm not sure. But I'm trying to find a place where it's leaking through. It might have been only one place. Well, I'm not sure if I'll find anything that's ripped wide open, uh, but I have found that all, pretty much all of these are broken, so I'm going to replace them all. I thought I may be able to replace a few of them, but they're all gone. And this, by the way, is uh, the brand. That's the brand there, Pleatco, and I'm gonna use a different brand. Uh, this was not terrible, but it wasn't terrific either. The original filter elements lasted years, and this lasted maybe two to maybe three years. So, uh, yeah, you know, it was less expensive than the original, uh, I think, Hayward uh, brand. So, you know, it's half or quarter the price. So, you know, you get what you pay for sometimes with these uh, filter elements. But I've got a different brand. I'll show you that and I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, so let's start taking this apart. Hi, so before I go any further, I want to give credit to my friend who has a channel, Swimming Pool Tips, Reviews, and How To, and maybe a little bit more in the name of the channel. Uh, but he is awesome. You should look at his channel for even more professional advice on how to... Uh, actually, he shows how to do this uh, grid replacement without pulling it out of the uh, vessel, um, which saves you some backbreaking work. Um, and uh, so thank you to him. So my filter is a little bit different. Uh, so you, if you have this kind of filter, you might want to watch this one. Um, let's take this collector off the top. Deep socket. There's a little yellow thing. I threw it down there where, where my drill 
socket is pointed. Okay. Why is that not coming off? Hold on. Oh, the whole the whole uh, rod is turning. That's okay. So it's threaded on both ends. Come on. Okay, I need two hands. So there's a, uh, a nut head on this end. I'm gonna just lock a vice grip on there. So that should hold that one end. I can turn either end then. Let me get a vice grip. So you can see what I did there. I snapped that on tight and now I'm gonna tip it up and use my uh, tool on the other end. Okay, so that worked just fine. And there's, there's a washer, which I dropped. So make sure you keep the washer, the nut, and oops, the little yellow cover. So let's, uh, we're gonna wiggle this top off. And Paul, his uh, biggest tip to me anyway, was to do these one at a time, doing them one at a time the whole thing doesn't come all apart and then you're wondering where to put the next one. And he started with uh, the short one. And the short one is this one right here. The short one next to the inlet or outlet, whatever that is. Now, if you want to make a note of where that inlet outlet goes, there's one place where there's a lot of free space here and to the right is the short element free space short element that's where this is going to go back on okay you look around the rest of it there's no big free space okay but right here there is so that's where your your thing goes right there and then the elements attached from there. See, like that. There, there, and so on. So, it also is marked short element here. I don't know if you can read that. The sun is kind of giving me a problem here. It says short element here. So once this comes off, don't worry about it. Put your short element in, then that's where this is going to go when you put it back on. Take a look at this uh, for cracks. Looks good. I'm going to wash it a little bit more and put it to the side. Here's where I got the replacements, and I will put a link, as I said. Make sure you get the right size. Mine's a 60. I think that's cubic feet or cubic inches. I don't know, cubic feet, I think. Okay, so I had a call to take and a little coffee break. Let's get back on this. So there's the new one. Uh, that's the short one. And it looks a little bit bigger, but I don't think it is. I think that's because the old one has kind of com collapsed on both of the ends. Um, and I think it's going to be fine. Now, I may do a little more washing um, as I expose each one of these uh, old ones and put the new ones in, not to clean it not to clean the old ones, but just so that where I set down the uh, element um, down onto the plastic at the bottom so that it sits into a nice uh, clean spot. And, and let's, so let's do a couple of these. Okay, this is a little tricky because they all want to fall off that way. So I've got three of them maybe on against my body and I'm kind of on a slope here so the rest of them don't want to fall that way they want to fall this way because of the slope so you're gonna to have to adjust to your own situation but if you look down the hole there you should be able to see how equally spaced they all are 
And if they're not all equally spaced like that, each one should point into a little space in between the plastic bits. If they don't all point into a little space equally, then you've got something wrong. You will take it out and try it again. Now, look to the outside, and each one should be captured by a little tab on the outside, like that tab right there. I hope it's coming out. Focus, come on, focus is not co cooperating. I'll try and get a picture of that somewhere else without having this all fall apart. Come on, focus. Um, maybe if I get closer. Yeah, that's getting there. All right, that's a little tab on the outside, and each one of them has to be captured by that. Otherwise, it's not going to work for you. I don't know why I can't get a focus there, but I think you get the point of it. Now the trick is to put the top back on, and I think that I think that I might actually try to make like a little big, like a big rubber band or a Velcro or a bungee or something like that to hold these all together before I put the top on. And let me see what I can come up with. So that's Froggy's tip right there for this video. If, if, if nothing else, this makes it worthwhile. If you're going to take it out of the vessel, um, have yourself a little piece of string or rope or uh, uh, bungee or something like that. I think something that you can adjust, maybe not something that's stretchy, but something that uh, you can adjust the length of and that'll hold it in place. And then you're going to go back and check all those things I told you to check. And then we'll proceed to put the top back on. So remember what I told you about the short element connects there. That's the short one that my finger's on. And now I can give you a little better picture of the alignment that I'm talking about. Everything has to have one of these sticking around the outside edge. The nicer you can get everything lined up, the easier this top is going to go on. Okay, and I maybe should have been better off putting this more on a flat spot than a slope because everything wants to slope that way but uh, hey that's for next time so that wasn't so bad um, I started with the short one there and I went around and I kind of tilted it that way and you have to go a little back and forth because as as you lift it up to get the next one in and this one might pop out and you have to go back and put that one back in a little bit. But you kind of work around in the circle a bit. And uh, I think I've got them all there. Now, before you start putting your um, nut back on there, do another walk around final check and make sure you've got one of those tabs sticking out to hold each of the bottom parts of the filter in. Make sure each one is in a slot on the top part and uh, make sure you've got the short one lined up and do all that. I'm going to do that right now and then I'm going to put the nut on. And when I put the nut on, it'll tighten everything down a little bit more. Okay, so this is the inside of the filter. I'm going to rinse that out some more and where my finger's pointing, that's the drain hole. The gasket looks okay. I mean, the O-ring, excuse me, looks okay. I probably should have put a new one on there, but uh, uh, I'll look and see if I have one that size, but if I don't, then next time I'll replace it. And uh, then we're going to drop the filter down, the, uh, the grid down, and then put the O-ring back on and the top back on and run it. I used a little bit of goof-off to clean some of these surfaces where we have uh, O-rings. And I'm going to clean around here too. The big old ring goes around there. There's that big old ring coiled up over there. So that they'll seal up. And then I'm going to put silicone on all of those surfaces. 
So the big O-ring is still good, and I'm using some spray lubricant instead of uh, putting it on with my fingers this time. Uh, so spray the bottom surface, spray the O-ring, spray the top surface, and I'll put some spray into that too. So I like to lubricate inside here and on the top of that so that this slides on easier when it makes the two halves of the vessel come together. So let's see how this goes. Almost there, my battery ran out. I'm gonna give it a, a new battery and just tighten it up a little bit more. My yard guys are here, so excuse the noise. And uh, I think we're good to turn this back on. Check the leaks. Okay, I think I've got it managed. I was uh, losing, uh, I was getting air into the pump and losing the pump suction. And it turns out that this skimmer at the top of the uh, pool, the gate was stuck up and it was causing air to be sucked down that skimmer. And then a uh, it was off and on, off and on. I didn't really know what it was, and I finally figured it out, so I wanted to pass that along to you guys and gals. Uh, it should take a couple of days, or maybe three, for the pool to clear up from the residual DE, diatomaceous earth, um, that was getting spread by the broken uh, grid that I had in there previously. At least I hope so, anyway. Waterfall's running, Navigator's running, everything's running. I've got a bad sensor, temperature sensor for my uh, spa. That's happened a few times and, uh, and that's the only thing. It only gets up to like 100 degrees or not even 100, like 95 degrees and it shuts off. And I'm 99% sure that's just a sensor that's gone by bad. It's new, but you know, even the new ones go bad. So I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, make sure you put DE according to the recommendations. Mine takes about nine scoops. You see that coffee can thing? And I, I uh, definitely at least put six. And I'm running low on it. I have to order some. So give me a thumbs up or like if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you want more from Froggy, ring the bell if you want notifications. And... Thanks again to uh, my other YouTuber, uh, Swimming Pool Tips, and do it yourself. Anyway, Google it, and he'll come out near the top because he has a lot of uh, subscribers, and he's very good. Anyway, see you out. Froggy out. Bye-bye. Hi. Just to follow up on this, um, I only found a few small holes, but... A small hole is all it takes for the DE, because it's like powder, to come out. So I, had, I found maybe two or three. Maybe I'll find a couple more like that. Just wanted to show you. No big gaping holes. Well, just after I finished uh, <laughs> inspecting that, I did find a big gaping hole. So I would say, um, is that another one? No, just that. Maybe just that great big one and, and two or three small ones. Uh, but it was sure clouding up the pool. It actually looks pretty good right now. Um, after running it for like four hours, it cleaned it up pretty good. Uh, but I have to brush it and stir up whatever is left of uh, the old uh, DE. And then it'll be like sparkling again.